Hey guys, do you have multiple garage doors that you wish you can bring in the home kit? Well, today I have a product that I'm gonna show you that will allow you to bring up to three garage doors and bring them all in the home kit on an affordable budget and it's super easy to install. Let's jump into the video. Now I've had my garage door openers in the home kit for quite a while now using a different system and by far it is my favorite smart home accessory that I use almost on a daily basis, either through automation, scenes, or manually opening and closing it. The convenience of controlling your garage door from anywhere where you have internet access is really, really cool. No matter if you just wanna open the garage door for a friend or possibly a delivery, or if another family member, or in my case, a cleaning lady forgets to shut it as they're leaving the house, I'm able to shut it even though I'm not at home. And with simple automations, you can have your garage door shut every single night at a specific time, so you no longer leave it open all night long like I used to do. <laughs> and then you have scenes, which your garage door openers can then be a part of a good night scene, either triggered manually or possibly even with a NFC tag next to your bed stand. And with a low ingenuity, you can actually set up an automation to have your garage door shut when you leave the house and have it automatically open up when you come home. And if you happen to have CarPlay, the garage door opener openers will pop up on the screen as you approach the house. You just have to hit it and it'll automatically open up. And let's not forget about the cool factor. Say you're outside with a neighbor and you pull out your phone and you say, hey, open the garage door and boom, it opens up and your neighbor is just gonna be like, oh. <laughs> and you can do all that on a budget. Unfortunately, I don't have final pricing yet. This item is gonna be launched on Indiegogo. They do have a single garage door opener on Amazon. I'll give you a heads up, they do have a version that looks just like this on Amazon, but that version only works with Lady A and Google. The only way you get the HomeKit version is currently through this Indiegogo campaign. I'm sure it will eventually make its way to Amazon, but currently the HomeKit version is not there. The version that you're gonna be looking for for HomeKit is the MSG 200 HK. If it doesn't have HK, it will not have HomeKit. The unit that I have is a pre-production unit and it is not certified with HomeKit yet, but they do promise that the Indiegogo campaign will have HomeKit compatibility. I would never tell you to buy a product on a HomeKit promise. Knowing me, Ross, and their track record, I have no doubt that they will bring HomeKit to this product, but don't buy this product for HomeKit unless you're willing to take that risk because this is a Indiegogo campaign. I would say buy their single garage door opener that has HomeKit kit already that's available on Amazon. Even though I'm sure it's gonna be a couple bucks more, at least you're guaranteed that it does have home kits. I do wanna thank Miros for sending this out to me for a full honest review. And they have no input on this video, so if I don't like something, I'm definitely gonna let you know. Now, of course, I can't install another garage door opener on the same garage door opener that I already have. So I'm gonna be testing this and demonstrating this on a friend's garage door opener. Now, like I said, the Miros Kali can handle up to three garage door openers, which by the way, if you're worried about compatibility, there is a list that they have online, which I'll link down below, that you can double check to make sure that your garage door opener is on this compatibility list. They say it works with over 200 different brands and 1,600 different models. But I actually don't think that is a complete list. The two garage doors that I installed this was not on that list and they work just fine. They also mentioned to look at your garage door opener sync button and if it happens to be green, red, or orange, you should be good to go. If it happens to be purple, you might need what's called a remote control duplicator, which looks just like this. And if you have a yellow sync button, you will need this remote control duplicator, which you can email support and they will send this to you. I think a good way to test this before you even buy the product to see if this will work. If you happen to have that green, red, orange, or purple sync buttons, you can actually just short out the garage door opener and see if it opens up. It's really easy to do. You just wanna find the two wires that go from your garage door push button. And if it goes to two screws, take like a pair of pliers and connect those two screws with the pair of pliers. If the garage door opener opens up, you're good to go. If you have the push-in wire connected 
connector type. All you need to do is take a little piece of wire and make sure they're bare on both sides and connect those two connectors or where those two wires go in. And if it opens up, you're, you should be good to go. But if you have a purple sync button and it doesn't do that, you're gonna need the little accessory. And if you have a yellow sync button, you will definitely need this little accessory. You happen to have four ports like I do here. The two on the right with two wires going into each port. Those are for the door IR sensors at the very bottom of your garage door. You don't want to mess with those. Also, Miros Kali only comes with one garage door sensor kit. So if you do have two or three car garage, you will need additional sensor kits. They are super cheap. You can actually find them on Amazon now for $15. I'm sure the Indiegogo campaign will also have them so you can buy them all com in one complete kit. It's about 23 feet of wiring, so you want to make sure your garage door opener and your garage door is within 23 feet. I've never seen anything further than 10 feet. You're also going to get some double-sided tape, screws, and also zip ties to help you mount the Miros Kali and sensing kit. You also need an iPhone, iOS 9 or above, which is just about everyone out there. And you will also need a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. This only works on 2.4, so if you only have a 5 gigahertz, this will not work for you. Another possible requirement is a Apple Home Hub if you want to control your garage doors when you're not home, which can be a Apple TV fourth generation or better, a HomePod, or an iPad running as a HomeKit hub. Once you have that all set up, you can control your garage doors remotely. But if you don't want to use a hub, that's okay too. You can still use the Miros Kali without a hub, but you will have to be on the same Wi-Fi with your phone. When it comes to the install of the hardware, it is super, super easy. Even though it did take a little bit of time, you will need a ladder to get up there. But it is something that you can do by yourself. To do this, they say before the hardware install, go ahead and connect the Miros Kali to a power source, connect the door sensing kit to the Miros Kali, and double check that connection. Um, the way that you do is just go into the Miros app, set everything up, and you should see when you open and close the, the uh, magnets, you should see if the door is open and closed, and that way you know it's working or not. But I kind of skipped that step and went ahead and did the hardware install first. It took me about 20 20 to 30 minutes for each door. It's really simple. The way I, that I did it was first connect the door sensing kit to the door. You want to make sure that the magnet and the door sensor is within probably about an inch or so and make sure you run the wire up the wall and not near the actual door um, track so that way it doesn't get stuck anywhere. You can tape it to the ceiling. You can, um, you know, if you have rafters, I just use zip ties to connect it to their rafters. It's just the easiest way to do it. You're definitely gonna get some vibration from the garage door opener. So wherever you place this, make sure you secure it correctly. That way it doesn't fall off and cause any issues. Go ahead, plug the door sensing wire in the back of the Miros Kali. Run your power cable from the outlet that you have for the garage door opener, also into the back of the Miros Kali. I did have a little hiccup, which me, Russ, says they're gonna fix. The wire that I plugged into what's labeled Garage Door 1 actually showed up as Garage Door 3, both in the Miros app and also in the Home app. No big deal, because you can relabel those, but just if you run into that issue, that's all you need to do. Take the two exposed wires and plug them into your garage door opener. So you wanna make sure both wires are in there, both for the garage door opener, or the push button and for the Mi Rust Kali. I didn't need to use this on my friend's garage door openers, but it seemed pretty easy to set up. You just want to sync this with your current garage door opener and plug those two exposed wires from the Miros Kali into here and you should be good to go. If you have a second or third car garage door opener, you're going to need that additional door sensing kit, which will run from the door sensor at the door up to your garage door opener and then back over to the first garage door. If you happen to have three garage door openers, you want to make sure you put the Mi Rust Kali on the center garage door opener. That way the wires are long enough for your setup. This up in HomeKit is super easy, just like any other HomeKit product. You actually don't need the Mi Rust app at all, and that's the way that I set this up, even though I will jump into the Mi Rust app just to show you additional settings if you want to play around with it. But to add this to HomeKit or the Home app, hit the top right 
plus in top right corner. Go ahead, scan the QR code on the back of the device, which by the way, remember this is currently uncertified, but they are in the process of getting this certified with HomeKit. It'll ask you what room you want to assign this to. Of course, you want to name it garage, and then just hit next. Now it will add all three garage door openers to the home app. Unfortunately, if you're only using one or two garage doors, all three will show up. So you're gonna to have to rename that third one to something like not used or uh, not in use or something like that. Unfortunately, if you try to delete that third one or the second one, it deletes them all together. Unfortunately, there's no way to get one or two of them out. You have to have all three of them in the home app. Home app might suggest some automations for you, which you can set up. These that are usually suggested because it has to do with security, they're not gonna run our Mac when you approach the house. You're getting a notification asking you if you want to run the automation, which you then have to tap and say run. I understand that is a security risk and you know that's the way that Apple sees locks and garage door openers. Ideally, that is not the way that I want to do my automations. I want my automations to run automatically. Luckily, there is a workaround so you can have that automation. Go ahead and shut your garage door and open it as you come and go. But it is not secure. So um, I'm going to tell you how to do it, but you do it at your own <laughs> risk. And the way that you do it is simply by bridging it through a like a smart plug or other device. So say as you are coming home, you want to have it automating to turn on a light in your house or a smart plug. And then a separate automation saying that when that light turns on or turns off, that will open the garage door. If you do that, that way, it will automatically run if you uh, mark it as the run without prompt. Don't forget to set up those automations to shut the garage door at a specific time of the night if you want that. Also, add it to, say, um, a good night scene. That way, if you have an NFC tag next to your bed, you can hit that every night and to make sure the garage doors sh are shut every night during your good night scenes. Now, I'm kind of jealous of my friend. He actually has CarPlay, so we did set up CarPlay and actually is really easy. All you need to do is have the HomeKit hub and have everything programmed to your phone and that's it. As you're approaching your house, it's gonna show up on the CarPlay screen. But then again, most cars have that little push button on their rear view mirror to open up the garage. But the concept is still cool. If you do wanna use the Miros app, you can go ahead and download it, set up an account and log in. It's gonna ask you, once you've already added to the home app, if you wanna add this to the Miros app, you can go ahead and say okay. And just like that, is now in the Miros app. One of the first things you'll notice, unlike the home app, you can actually deactivate any of the garage doors so it doesn't show up in the Miros app. You can also set up a pin code if you want a little bit more extra security. You can also enable and disable notifications or have additional notifications like when it's been open for X amount of time or a notification if you left it open after a certain time. You can also do a auto close after a certain amount of time or at a certain time of night. I think it's a little bit easier to use everything on the home app, but it's up to you if you want these additional settings from the Mi Ross app. Remember, if you want to use Lady A or Google, you can definitely sync up those accounts with the Mi your Mi Ross account and use those voice first assistants also. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. It was super easy to install. It works with over 200 different brands and 1,600 models. You can use it in the Home app exclusively if you want to, but if you do want a couple additional features, you can also download and use the Miros app. And the icing on the cake is that it's super affordable. If you want to check it out, Definitely use my affiliate links down below. It helps to support the channel with no additional cost to you. Also, I want to thank my Patreon members here. These guys are awesome. They support the channel financially, even though they don't have to. They just find value in this content. And if you want to learn the benefits of becoming a Patreon member, check that out right there. If you want to see my next video in my HomeKit series, check out that video right there. I appreciate you. I will see you on the next one.